There's something I really want to drill down that you mentioned there, origins, okay? Because this has come up in uh, different, uh, different scenarios. So give me the insider's view. You, you touched on it, but specifically on cars, uh, SARS-CoV-2 origins. I mean, we, we went through this thing with uh, lab leak claims made by the Department of Energy and the FBI. Can you compare those with the actual evidence of wet market origins and spread? Right. It would be nice that when Christopher Wray testified in front of Congress representing the FBI and said that he thought there was credible evidence that this was a lab leak, that he actually prevent, presented one scintilla of credible evidence. Same with Department of Energy. They just sort of waved their hands and said, this, there's credible evidence. So what's the evidence that this was a, an animal to human spillover event? Um, the, there has been progressive deforestation that has allowed bats to live closer and closer to other mammals than ever before, which is why we had an animal to human spillover event in, 20, um, in 2002 with SARS-1, an animal to human spillover event in 2012 with MERS, and now this one. It occurred in the western section of the Hunan Wholesale Seafood Market. There was a, there, all the original cases emanated from that one area. Number one. Number two is there was a picture done that was put on a, a, a website that was then quickly taken off of, of how all these mammals, you know, so dozens of mammals that were sold illegally, were all sort of gathered together in these unsanitary conditions in that section of the Hunan seafood market, including animals that can transmit this virus, like red foxes or raccoon dogs. And the, 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 the Chinese went in there, Chinese scientists went in there and did the kind of genetic studies looking at things like the cages uh, or the, the uh, materials that were used to slaughter the animals or materials that were used to brush the hair of the animals and found evidence of, of that virus in that area. So, so th th what you see is you see in that area, exactly where you would expect a, an animal to human spillover event to occur, it occurred. There's actually a podcast done by three evolutionary biologists, uh, Michael Warby, um, Chris Anderson, and Eddie Holmes called Decoding the Gurus, where for three hours, they go through all the data that shows that this was an animal to human spillover event. And so nonetheless, people don't believe it. Two thirds of the American public think that this was a lab leak. Um, and and the, the, the arguments that have been made for why it was a lab leak is they say, well, the, if you look at this virus, you can't find any evidence in nature of this spike protein. It's unique. Not true. It has been found in Laos and other countries. Number two, they say there's something called a furin cleavage site. There's a whole book written about this by Alicia Chan and Matt Ridley called Viral, where they say, look, this furin cleavage site is not in nature, but it is found in nature. So the only thing you have, what you have on one side is, is an animal to human spillover event, which happens all the time, right? I mean, we're always at risk of animal to human spillover events. AIDS was an animal to human spillover event that occurred from when SIV mutated, uh, simian immunodeficiency virus mutated to HIV uh, back in Cameroon in the 1930s. Um, and, and on the other side, on the lab leak side, all you have is innuendo and conspiracy. It's hard to watch. This is not a scientific controversy. It's a cultural controversy, but not a scientific controversy.